This is chapter three, part three, the adjudication process. Chapter three, part three, lecture video. Slide 21, the defense during the prosecution case. So the defense can object and at the proper time before or during the trial, that's called the contemporaneous objection rule. And if you want to read a little bit more about that, it's in the middle of page 73. Admissible evidence, um, the defense will seek to exclude or limit the prosecution's evidence, then the judge will rule on admissibility. The judge will sustain an objection or overrule an objection. Sustaining an objection means that the objection is supported. Overruled means the objection is not supported. The trial, slide 22, questioning witnesses, evidence only admitted through witnesses in most cases. It require, requires a basis as to why that witness must may introduce evidence. So a foundation has to be laid. That's very common for forensic technicians to lay the foundation for cases. They're presenting the evidence. The forensic technician is the one who does the photography, the evidence collection, the crime scene diagram. So they, a lot of times, a forensic technician's testimony is simply to lay the, the foundation for the evidence. And then expert witnesses will come in and talk about the results of that evidence. A person who's on the stand a lot is the, the lead detective because they're also covering all the investigation aspects of the case as well. Cross-examination, it's a constitutional right under the Sixth Amendment to uh, point out flaws, inconsistencies, possibly lies. It's limited if the witness needs special protection, such as a child or mentally handicapped person. And it's confronting the witness. And that's what page 74 talks about that at the bottom. The Sixth Amendment allows a defendant to confront people who are, con who are accusing them of a crime. And at the very bottom of page 74, after the prosecution finishes questioning a witness, the defense attorney will have an opportunity to confront that witness, and that's called cross-examination. They will ask, one, follow-up questions that were made during direct examination. They'll ask relevant questions that were not asked during direct examination, and they'll challenge the credibility of the witness. That can happen to any one of you who end up working in law enforcement. You should expect that in court to have your credibility challenged. As long as you have the truth on your side and you um, are organized in your work and prepared, then you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about that. Slide 21, the trial, defense during prosecution case. The objections may... Did I already cover that? Oops, I did. We're at, not on that slide. We're on slide 23. Questioning witnesses continuing. Impeachment and rehabilitation. This is interesting. Impeachment is attacking a witness based on some problem with the testimony or the witness himself. But rehabilitation is the, the other side tries to bring that person back. So it's seeking to explain those problems or issues and why the witness was impeached. So rehabilitation is if, if, if one side, and we're talking about right now the defense, if the defense is successful at impeaching a prosecutor's witness, showing they lied or something, then they're impeached, but the prosecution can rehabilitate that witness and prove, no, that's not true. Let's explain what happened and um, bring them back to where they're not impeached anymore. It's kind of confusing, but let's look on page 75 of the textbook. You'll see at the very bottom, there's a little upside down triangle. You have direct examination of the witness, and that could be the prosecution or the defense, and then the cross-examination of the opposing attorney, and then you have redirect, and then you have recross. So that's talking about questioning. Slide 24, the trial. I thought there was more about impeaching a witness. Hopefully that makes sense. The defense case in chief. The defendant does not have to offer any evidence. There's a presumption of innocence that requires the prosecution to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. But the defense will call witnesses and present evidence to have a strong case. Character evidence. This is something the defendant may choose to do to show good character, but that can open the door. So if character witness is introduced by the defense, that opens the door for the prosecution to make attacks on character witness. Character evidence, rather. Page 77 talks about that. And at the bottom of that big paragraph of page 77, the prosecution, so if the defense brings, char brings witnesses for character defense, character uh, evidence for the defense, at the bottom of page 77's uh, main paragraph, 
The prosecution will also be allowed to call its own character witnesses during rebuttal to show that the defendant, in fact, does not have a good reputation. And that's if the defense opens the door for character evidence, now the prosecution can uh, use that. Slide 25, the trial, rebuttal, and rejoinder. Okay, here we go. So rebuttal is when the prosecution calls a witness after the defense's case, and that's to rebut testimony offered by the defendant about issues not raised by the prosecution. Rejoinder is when the defense calls a witness after rebuttal to reject the witness or evidence used by the prosecution. So it's like a back and forth thing here. Look at page 78 to try to explain this a little bit better. Rebuttal and rejoinder. Sometimes the defense witnesses raise a new issue, such as an alibi or character issue. The rebuttal gives the prosecution a chance to call witnesses on these new issues. The judge has the power to decide if the prosecution may call rebuttal witnesses, and if they are called, the defense may cross-examine them. Rejoinder is the calling of witnesses by the defense to attack the evidence introduced by the prosecution during the rebuttal. <laughs> if the judge allows the rejoinder, the prosecution can cross-examine. So here we go. We have the prosecution showed their case. The defense showed their case. The defense showed some evidence that went against the prosecution's original evidence. And now the prosecution says, oh my gosh, I need a, I need a witness who can rebut what they just said. So they go and find another witness or they or whatever. And then they get that person to come in. And then they... And the judge says, okay, yeah, you can have that witness come in and rebut that, uh, what was just said, and the evidence that was just presented. But the defense can now cross-examine that person. And then the defense says, oh, yeah, I'm going to find a witness that will rebut your rebuttal. And that's called a rejoinder. So they get somebody. Now, the best example of this is My Cousin Vinny. If you watch that movie, My Cousin Vinny, it's an 80s movie. It's a great courtroom trial example and it's really funny it has a lot of swear swear words in it but it's really funny and you see that where they call Melissa, Melissa Tomei I think is her name she's the rebuttal witness and she pretty much uh, seals the case there or she's the rejoinder witness you'd have to look at it watch the movie okay let's see where are we at slide 26 finally Trial ending stages, closing arguments. If you read the middle of page 78, it talks more about that. So you have the prosecutor, the defense, then the prosecutor again, because the prosecutor has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt, so they get to go last. Jury instructions. That's important, important. The judge explains the law to the jury and gives them instructions. Page 78 at the bottom talks about that more. And jury deliberation is done in private. The jury reviews the evidence, they reach a verdict. Page 79 at the bottom talks about that, how they choose a foreman. And slide 27, after the trial, if there's no verdict, it's called a hung jury, and there can be a retrial, and that does not violate je je double jeopardy. If there is a verdict, how the jury voted on each charge, the jury can be pulled. Every single person has uh, to say that, yes, he's guilty or not or guilty if, if the judge wants to do that. For sentencing, if it's guilty, it's often delayed to allow the judge to consider the verdict and they may get a report on the defendant. Sometimes the jury sets the penalty themselves for capital cases. And post-conviction, there's often appeals that are file filed after a guilty verdict. Page 81 talks about hung jury and page 82 talks more about sentencing. If you want to look through there, oh, something important is victim statements. So if you could have a, a victim like victims in the family of homicide victims may be given the right to make a statement during the penalty phase to uh, determine sentencing as well. That is the end of chapter three.